What I'm going to show you here is how to do a mosaic in APP and to be honest with you it's nothing short of brilliant. In that you put every single exposure in every single pane that you want to use into the into the software, put in your calibration frames, make sure that the settings are all correct and then press a button and then 10-15 minutes later you'll come back and you will have your mosaic um, already done and looking good, seamless, absolutely perfect. So I'll just show you how we go through this. Um, what I've got to do now is just load in all my lights. So these aren't finished. Um, I've got uneven numbers in each one, but I just wanted to do this to demonstrate how brilliant it is. As you can see, I'm just loading these in. That one went in on its own. And when it's in, I have got 29 subs in total. It will be uh, 60 when I've got all the data. So it will just take a little bit longer, but the process will remain the same. Okay, so there you can see I've got 29 exposures in and that is all of my HA that I've got at this minute. What I'm now going to load in is I'm going to click on the flats and I'm going to load in the calibration frames. Now what APP knows is it knows exactly what the calibration frames are. So even though you put it in flats, it will use them accordingly. So here I've got master bias, a master flat, and here I'm using a luminance flat for HA data, but it seems to work fine, so that's good enough for me and a bad pixel map, so I'm just going to load them in. Okay, down here you can see that it's set telling me that the lights are able to be um, calibrated with their master bias, their master flat, and the BPM. So that's good, that's uh, easy for me to, uh, to work with that, I know that's the case. And also, if you just remember, I've showed you before, um, this is just any frame randomly clicked, this is a uh, some pain, here we go down here, this is the first pane, and this is it in its linear form. Um, if you do the left hand mouse, and then that zooms in, and you can see here all the hot pixels that I've got. Just to show that your calibration frames are working, click on the L calibrated, zoom in again, and you'll see virtually all of the hot pixels have gone. There's a few bits and pieces around, but that will all come out in. Um, in the final stacking so that's absolutely no problem but I think that's a really really useful tool. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to analyze the stars. Um, on here I'm going to lower the kappa down a little bit because I'm on a long focal length and there's not a huge amount of stars there and I'm just going to up the star limit although it won't pick up that many and analyze stars. This won't take too long, but I shall um, pause this and then come back when it's completed. Okay, so that's completed now, and you can see that down here you've got CA, which is calibrate, so you know that your calibration frames are all there working fine, and you've now got star there, so you know that it's been star analysed. Now you've got the tabs up here, but you actually don't need to work through them all individually. Um, you need to set them up, but then you can just press integrate at the end. So. What I'm going to do here, this is register, and I have found that for me, on this focal length, triangles works best, along with a scale start of 5 and a finish of 12. I'm going to use the dynamic distortion correction. I'm going to keep same camera and optics, because they are, it's all from the same, um, the same imaging rig. Um, now, this here, number of overlapping frames, don't be fooled into thinking that is the number of overlapping frames in your mosaic, because it isn't. What it refers to is the distortion model. Now, this is only relevant in three cases. First of all, if you're using, a mos if you're using um, the mosaic registration mode, which we are, obviously, because we're making mosaic. Secondly, if you've enabled dynamic 
um, correction. And thirdly, if you've disabled same camera and optics, which I haven't in this case. So for me, that is going to be irrelevant. But the whole point of it is, if you are merging and making mosaics from different cameras, different imaging rigs, etc. And then what this figure does is it influences the distortion model. So if you are using um, different cameras, different optics, and then you and bigger mosaics, and then if you up, increase this number, then you'll get a better optical correction at the end of the day. Don't be fooled into thinking, oh, I've got six pay mosaics, so that's six overlapping frames. That's not how that works. Right, registration mode. Obviously, I'm going to do mosaic. One thing down here, you want to tick no under overshoot. Now, in the latest uh, version of APP, this is ticked by default, um, but it may not be in yours. OK, so that's all we want to do there in registration. Normalize. There's nothing in there particularly that I'm interested in adding over and above the defaults and integrate. What you see here is it tells me I've got 29 subs of 29 to integrate, which is good. I'm going to be using the full mode here because I'm doing a mosaic. I'm going to use second degree LNC. This is just through trial and error that I found previously works best for me. I'm going to enable the multi-band blending because what that does is deals with the edges that you get from dithering, from mosaics, etc. Uh, I'm going to put that up to 11%. Outlier rejection, I'm going to use Sigma Clip. I'm just going to put that kappa down a little bit. Again, this is just something I've found through trial and error. I'm going to put it down to 1.5. Again, on this, make sure that you've got no under overshoot ticked. Uh, scale. Now, if you wanted to make a smaller, um, a smaller mosaic at the end of the day, so this is going to come out... Um, say, for example, my um, my camera was a thousand pixels square, and then out of a mosaic of two by three, that would come out at two thousand on the short side and three thousand on the long side. This scale, if this is is one, then that's the size it's going to come out. If you wanted to make it smaller, say you were you were working with an absolute giant mosaic, you just wanted to test it all went together or something, and you weren't particularly bothered in like the final outcome, you just wanted to see, and then you might want to lower this, this scale, so that you actually get a smaller mosaic, but you'll be able to see that everything works well. So in this case, I want it at one, but that option is there for you. Right, so we've done the settings. We've done the settings for normalize, which I kept at default. We've done the settings for register. And now integrate. So all I do now is I tick, and um, sorry, all I do now is press integrate and give that maybe 15 minutes and that will run through everything. That will integrate, that will normalize, that will register everything and that will give me at the end a completed mosaic with absolutely no hassle from my end apart from putting the lights in and putting in the calibration frames. OK, so I'll stop this now. This will probably take about 15 minutes and then we'll come back when it's finished. OK, now we finish. This has taken maybe 15 minutes. Um, but to be honest with you, um, I've done absolutely nothing beyond when I did the settings. I pressed integrate and that's it. So I've now just come back to a stack of the Butterfly Nebula. There you go. So setting all the um, making all the settings correct, um, pressing a button, and that is it. Um, and it's created a totally seamless mosaic. The bottom bits aren't quite as good, but as I said, this is not the final data. This was just to show you how this worked. And the bottom subs, the bottom panes are the ones that have got less data in than the other ones, so that's absolutely fine. So I just wanted to show you how absolutely brilliant it is. Just load in your lights, load in your calibration masters, um, get the settings right, and then press integrate, and 10, 15 minutes later, come back, and there it is. Okay, I hope you found that useful.